said that we moved that one year. We came back five times to the yeah. same spot, and I kept moving. I moved it up to a mile away. It ended up back at the same spot right in front of the lodge down there at Natural Bridge. There was a light on the steps, and it was a gestating female. It was using it for heat, and it just kept coming back and coming back, and we kept moving it further and further. It just kept coming back. So, possibly fun. Yeah. Who knows? Good question. I, yeah, I mean, who knows how they do it? But it, I mean, I think there's a lot more going on there. Little tiny we credit that we for, it. that one we didn't pit tag, but we did. I did clip scales, so it was the same snake. Well, then they finally just turned out the light. And yeah, was, finally I got them to turn out the light, and the snake didn't come back. <laughs> it may come back, and it was disappointed and left. Yeah, well, it probably came back for a while. Yeah. 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 So basically. Your study on the home range thing and moving it the short distance, uh, younger snakes are still going to, if you do move it, let's say not 100 yards, let's say 250 yards, its youngness and its natural instincts won't balance out with the home range, it's try to make it to 250 yards or maybe develop its criteria for... You know, I don't know how far juvenile rattlesnakes move. But I would think that probably it would be dependent on that. You know, if you're a juvenile rattlesnake, you follow your mom to your den, probably, or at least to an area where you can den. And if you survive the winter, you come out in the spring, <coughs> and at that point you're pretty much on your own, mm -hmm. from what I understand. And who knows? Maybe they do something else, I don't know. But um, at that point, they're going to try to establish their range, and they're going to basically go in search of food. So I'm sure the range is just determined initially by them looking for food and, and smelling something that smells good and going towards that, and then they hang out where the food is and try to grow that year. And then in the winter, they return to the den. Um, that same den, right? Yeah. Well, Mainly yeah. do on same, locking in yeah. natural. Yeah, they know. I'm sure they go back to the same, the same place to den. But, uh, you know, if you find, if, if then you find that juvenile, you know, in your driveway or something, wanderings. If you move it, it's hard to know because, you know, like say the snake came down this way and is in your driveway and you move it over here, well you may screw it up, but if you if you move it the way it came from, it might be fine. Or if you move it, you know, tangentially to that, it might be okay. But, you know, of course there's no way to know where it was before it showed up on your doorstep or in your campground or whatever. So, you know, I would advocate as short a distance as you can to be out of the area where you want it, you know, or where you don't want it be, but man, it's really hard to know things like that. I mean, we do stuff like that all the time. We move things around, we say, oh, we're letting it free, it's great, it's wonderful, and maybe it is, and maybe it isn't, you know, we just don't know. What just clicked in my head is because I know in nature, you know, uh, the coyote mother and father, they're young, they're a product of their environment, how to hunt, where to do this, so basically that would stand the reason that that brings a safe assumption, you know. The baby snakes are going to follow the mother for what, the first year? To the first, second shedding, you said? Well, no. you know, they shed initially seven to ten days after they're born. And then there is evidence that they follow the females in the den, or follow other adults even, maybe, to the den in the winter. After that, there's no evidence that they are associated with an adult in the, after that initial going to the den. There's no evidence that they are associated with an adult mother or anybody else after that. That doesn't mean it doesn't occur. It doesn't mean it does occur. We don't know. Um, people haven't found them generally associated with adults at that point. But they're hard to find. You know, <laughs> so. And a lot of times the babies are born right before, you know, short yeah. time before they're going to be born. A lot of times they don't eat before they hibernate initially. I mean, they usually don't. They go into hibernation relatively soon. They're born in very late summer. And maybe I would if I was better at finding snakes. <laughs> there are real little holes. Yeah. I, um, 
Well, yeah. all those copperheads were any of those babies and juveniles? Those were all rabbit females. But I did not see, I, I did see some juvenile copperheads around there um, and later in the summer. Um, but I, you know, I was like, oh, they're copperheads. <laughs> you know, I wasn't, I wasn't trying to see where they were going at the time. They were all opaque, so they hadn't shed yet. They were, they were new ones. So. It's hard to find baby snakes, like, yeah. especially those. Try to find a baby box turtle. I have seen a few, I mean, just young animals are just hard to find, yeah, especially are. the herds. I mean, yeah. you see them right after, you know, they're born, and then it's very, very hard to find them. Yeah. As far as, and then you said that normally in the south, it's not a funeral <coughs> den. What, is there only just one in a den then, for the most part? What I saw, <coughs> there was one snake. Okay. No, like, yeah, there may have been other snakes I didn't see. I'm not going to swear to that. Yeah. But I didn't see any other ones there. Um, and from what I have read about other studies further south, Tennessee and Carolinas, it was individual snakes. And I tend to, you know, people who are have done it for longer than I have, I tend to, when they say there's one snake there, I tend to They'll depend on it. say one snake and you're dead also. Yeah, yeah. I feel, I feel a little bit more confident about saying that. Mine. And then when you read the reports of somebody finds a communal den, there's a lot of snakes there. That's what I was going to, that was my next question was, is what are you talking about? Um, well, it varies, of course, you know, too, could be a communal yeah. den, but I mean, there's, there's certainly reports of lots and lots of snakes, and certainly 10 or 20 is not, I think, I mean, at I this see, day and age, it's probably reasonable. You hear about garter snakes being, Oh, well, yeah, it's not like the garter, it's not like the Ontario garter snakes where they're just, you know, giant mass of writhing snakes, it's not quite like that, but when you read about it, you know, you're walking along the ridge line in the spring and there, you know, there's three or four snakes that you can see kind of out basking and stuff, and, and I just didn't see anything like that at all, and I did look, when it, especially the first year when the snake emerged out of the den, I was like, all right, I'm going to find another snake, another radio, and I scoured so, <laughs> now again, it doesn't mean it's not there because you saw. I think I think a lot of the but, old dens have been destroyed. Yeah. Um, the bigger communal dens that would were set up for that because I the one den I used to go to when I was like 15, 16 years old, we'd find 50 to 60 timbers in the area. There's no timbers there now. They they firebombed it. You know, as soon as the locals found out it was there, put it, made a little Molotov cocktail and took it out, and they waited till winter to do it. So they were smart enough, well not smart enough, I guess in a way smart, they got what they wanted. Yep.